Hello and welcome, Charles here. For today, I want to talk about longevity again, because this is a topic I'm really passionate about and in our time where we live right now in the 21st century, we have actually a lot of studies coming out and being published that show us what we could do to be able to live longer and to have also healthier life. So if you want to know more about how to live longer, what to do, what kind of habits to have in your life to be able to live longer, make sure to watch this video till the end and also make sure to subscribe to my channel because I will be talking more about this topic. So without any further ado, let's dive into the video. For today, I want to talk about the study I've read that was conducted with apes, with monkeys actually. Because if you look at studies that study longevity, there are, not, there are no studies out there that study that with human beings, I mean not for a long time. You cannot tell people, hey, just eat like that and just do that for 20, 30 years and then you see if you're still around. This, this just doesn't work. So we have a lot of studies that were conducted with other organisms such as fruit flies, um, mice, rats, but now we also have some studies that were, that were conducted with primates. And the interesting thing about these primates is they age similar to human beings. So their hair falls off, their eyesight gets worse and also other stuff that happens also with human beings. So you can study them in a similar way as you would study human beings. Now, what they did with these monkeys is they studied them for over 20 years. And one, uh, like the average lifespan of these monkeys is around 26 years. So what they did is they studied these monkeys for over 20 years and they put the monkeys in different groups. One groups were monkeys that ate their, their normal diet, their normal caloric intake. The other groups were monkeys that ate around 20 to 30 percent less calories that they would normally eat. And then after 20 years they looked at both groups and they, they looked at how many monkeys were still alive. So after around 20 years 37% of the monkeys that ate normally, they were dead. And after a monkey died, they actually did an autopsy and they looked how many monkeys died of age-related causes. So if you say one of these monkeys lives uh, on average around 26 years and after 20 years approximately 37% of them died, this is pretty average. But in the other group, where the monkeys ate less calories, these monkeys, 87% of them were still alive. So 13% of them died and 5 out of this 14 that died, died because of age-related diseases. So you can clearly see that the monkeys that ate less calories were still alive, like more of them were alive. And also if you look at them, like on, on pictures, you can clearly see which monkeys ate less calories. And this is one of more studies that were conducted with these monkeys that showed similar results. So how should you look at these results and how should you interpret these results? Why do monkeys and also other organisms that eat less live longer? And one thing I was already already talking about in one of my older videos uh, was the pathway called MTOR pathway and also growth hormones like IGF-1 and insulin. And with these growth hormones, what you need to know is when we are young, we need a high level of these growth hormones because we need to reach maturity pretty soon. So then we will be able to reproduce as fast as possible because evolution wants us to reproduce. But then when we hit maturity, when we get older, we don't need a high level of these growth hormones anymore because we don't need to grow. And the problem with these growth hormones is if you still experience high level of these growth hormones, it will, if you provoke cell proliferation, your cells will divide more and then also the risk of getting, of getting your cells damaged, of getting DNA damaged is higher and DNA damaged is also linked to diseases like cancer and other age related diseases. So if you have a high level of these growth hormones, you will age faster. At least this is how you can look at these studies. Now, if you eat less calories, you will eat also less food, less nutrients that will provoke these growth hormones to be activated. Hormones like insulin are provoked by carbs, but also by specific amino acids such as leucine. And also amino acids like methionine are linked to your lifespan. So high levels of methionine and leucine may lead to short lifespan. 
also looked at methionine restriction and lifespan extension. It seems that the less methionine there is in body tissues, the longer different animals tend to live. But what are the possible implications for humans? I've talked before about the free radical theory of aging, this concept that aging can be thought of as the oxidation of our bodies, just like rust is the oxidation of metal. And methionine is thought to have a pro-oxidant effect. So the thinking is that lower methionine intake leads to less free radical production, the so-called reactive oxygen species, which slows the rate of DNA damage, which then would slow the rate of DNA mutation, slowing the rate of aging and disease, thereby potentially increasing our lifespan. So we actually have studies that looked at this specific thing. So they, they compared uh, low protein intake to the, the length of your lifespan. And diets that were lower in protein made that organisms, um, in most studies it was rats, were living longer. They didn't even need to restrict the caloric intake of these rats, they just um, restricted their protein intake. Which is super interesting, because you don't even need to eat less calories, you just need to eat less protein. And you should be able to produce similar results due to a lower IGF-1 and lower growth hormone levels. Now you can still argue and, and say, yeah, okay, but the monkeys that, uh, ate, that age less fast were aging less fast because they ate less calories and they um, had also less weight. They were like slim and skinny and this also will improve your, your biological markers, your, your blood levels of like cholesterol and all the things that could make you die sooner. This is true, but there are also other studies showing where they compared uh, vegans, like people on a plant-based diet, and people that were eating animal protein, animal foods, they compared people with the same BMI, both groups of people were um, doing like exercise, it was uh, it were triath triathletes, and the people that were on an animal uh, based diet, they had higher levels of IGF-1, they had higher levels of these growth hormones, which should lead them to age faster. So, why do people on a plant-based diet have lower IGF-1 levels? It's because the protein that they're eating contains less of the amino acids leucine and methionine, which also provoke this, this IGF-1 levels, this high IGF-1 levels. Not to say that the plant-based diet is the holy grail, but in my mind it's pretty clear that the research goes into this direction of showing, hey, more plant-based proteins uh, should be or could be more beneficial than animal-based proteins. There are three ways to lower methionine intake. Caloric restriction, they call it dietary restriction here, meaning like you cut your intake of food in half, for example, only eating every other day, that would lower your methionine intake. Or because methionine is found concentrated in certain proteins, you could practice protein restriction across the board, eating a relatively protein-deficient diet. Or the third option is to eat enough food, eat enough protein, but just eat plant proteins because they are relatively low in methionine. Caloric restriction is hard because we walk around starving all the time. Something you know, like every other day eating is never likely to gain much popularity as a pro-longevity strategy for humans, so it may be more feasible to achieve moderate methionine restriction in light of the fact that plant-based diets tend to be relatively low in this amino acid. As we've seen, plant products tend to be lower in methionine than animal products. Yes, protein restriction across the board can be performed to avoid the hunger of caloric restriction. But again, methionine restriction could also be performed emphasizing low methionine, high-quality vegetable sources of protein. Among foods containing plant proteins, legumes are especially rich in essential amino acids, offering excellent substitutes for proteins of animal origin. The fact that beans have comparatively low methionine has been classically considered a disadvantage. But given the capacity of methionine restriction to decrease the rate of free radical generation in internal organs, to lower markers of chronic disease, and to increase maximum longevity, ironically converts such a quote-unquote disadvantage into a strong 
advantage. So after hearing all this information, I want to give a little summary and also want to make something clear because a lot of people that hear these results ask me, okay, but um, I want to go to the gym, I want to make gains, I want to eat a lot of protein so I can build muscle. What does that mean with my longevity? Am I like, am I like done? Is it like, like, is it not good or something? And um, it, it's not black and white. But if you if you are somebody like me that wants to combine both worlds, because you know uh, I don't just want to go to the gym and lift heavy weights and eat high protein, but I have all this knowledge about longevity and then I'm doing nothing with it. I want to I want to combine both worlds. So how I think about the, it, the, this is is like that. It's like a spectrum, you know. On one side, um, you have like the longevity diet, like low protein, all plant based and uh, yeah perfect for longevity at least what science shows right now on the other side you have like uh, the high protein diet the high calorie diet they're like going to the gym lifting weights eating a lot of food you know putting stress on your body but making optimal gains so how i look at it is i want to be somewhere in between the spectrum i want to optimize my protein intake so i can make gains but on the other side i want to optimize my nutrition so i can get um, the best results in terms of longevity and health. So how I am doing it is I am on a completely plant-based diet so all my protein comes from plants but I'm still eating a little bit more protein so I will uh, be at the lower end of protein requirements regarding muscle building. So the protein requirements um, regarding muscle building are around 0.8 grams of lean body mass in pounds. So if you take your body mass, your weight, in pounds and you, you um, subtract your body fat from that you have your lean body mass. So for example you weight 150 pounds with 15% body fat which means you have around 130 pounds of lean body mass. You calculate calculate that times 0.8 and then you will get something around 100 grams of protein so this would be how I would approach it like around 100 grams of protein even less what actual studies show we'll talk about that in another video so it would be around that but what I'm doing is I get all my protein from plant-based diet from plant-based foods because a lot of plant-based foods um, they have a lot of co um, compounds in them that fight diseases like cancer, um, heart disease, and they like kind of prevent this, these diseases by just eating this, these plant foods. And on the other side, these plant foods will give me all the amino acids I need. And also, um, plant-based protein sources may be less high in quality of protein, but because they are less high in quality of protein, they also have less high levels of leucine and methionine, which will also put me more on the side of the spectrum of longevity. So as you can see, it's pretty complicated kind of, but what I'm doing is pretty simple. I eat all my proteins from plant-based sources. All my, the food I'm eating is, comes from plants. And I'm, I'm at the lower end of the protein requirements. So I am probably letting some gains on the table, I believe, but I just want to be safe and I want to have a healthy diet in general. So that's why I'm doing it like that. Let me know in the comments below what you want to do with that knowledge, do you want to change something, what do you think about that, let me know. And also if you want to hear more about this topic, make sure to subscribe because it's something I'm already researching, so why not share it with you guys. So thanks a lot guys for subscribing, thanks a lot guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.